So last summer, I started working on my dream XC race bike. I know, it's not everybody's thing. XC's kind of old school, but honestly, I absolutely love it. Anything to do with endurance is right up my alley. So an XC bike is perfect for my local trails and races. Now when I got this bike from Bikes Online, I was shocked to see that it weighed over 30 pounds. It's a carbon bike. That's heavy for an aluminum bike, let alone a carbon bike. So this thing had to go on a diet. So with the goal in mind of making this my dream XC race bike and dropping some weight from this frame, I went ahead and I got started. The first upgrade was going tubeless with some wider and lighter tires. Then I upgraded the handlebar, stem, grips, pedals, even wheels. I put on some Hunt trail-wide wheels. And then ultimately, I upgraded the front fork to a SID Select. I could really feel this bike coming to life. With all these upgrades, I was actually able to get the bike all the way down to a little over 27 and a half pounds. This was a ton of weight compared to what the bike originally weighed. And ultimately, with all those changes, this bike started to feel super fast. But I had it in the back of my mind that it could be even better. I originally had my eyes set on some Hunt XC race wheels, which are only about 1,500 grams. And if I could get my hands on a set of these wheels, this could potentially drop an extra pound of weight on this bike. Several months went by, we went all the way through winter, and then I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and pick up some of these Hunt XC race wheels. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get these installed and see exactly how much better it makes this bike. These wheels come in at 1500 grams. They have 28 spokes per wheel. They have a five degree engagement hub and they're also only 24 millimeters wide. And if I'm gonna be honest with you, that's a number that I was a little bit concerned with. I'm used to the Hunt trail wide wheels, which are 30 millimeters wide, and I absolutely love them. I never have to worry about bottoming out and hitting the rims on any roots or rocks. But with these 24 millimeter wide, I'm not really sure exactly what's gonna happen. We're just gonna have to see whenever I get them out on the trail. Now, as I was going through the install process of putting these wheels on the bike, I wanted to go ahead and weigh everything that was on the Hunt trail wide wheels and get an actual base amount before I put everything over onto the XC race wheels. And sure enough, after I weighed both of the wheels, it looks like I saved just over one pound in wheel weight. Now this is the improvement that I was expecting to see on paper, but to see it here in reality is definitely a huge relief. Now the looks of the bike didn't really change at all because I went from a set of Hunt wheels to another set of Hunt wheels. Now that I got the wheels installed, I wanna do one last upgrade while I'm here. I wanna upgrade my MT201 levers to the Dior XT levers. This is a super simple upgrade that you can easily do if you already have Shimano brakes on your bike. And that's thanks to the way that Shimano designed the barb and olive whenever you're looking at the BH59 or the BH90 hydraulic hoses that Shimano uses. Each one of them uses the exact same olive but they do use a little bit different barb. But luckily the outer dimensions that fit into the olive are the exact same. So you can easily use the BH59 that comes on the MT201 brakes for the Dior XT levers. Now I know that was a ton of nerdy information thrown at you really quickly. If you guys wanna see a more detailed breakdown of all that information, comment below, let me know, and I can make a full video as to why this actually works. So one of the huge advantages of going to the Dior XT levers is gonna be that I can go to that one finger braking. And that's a huge thanks to the servo wave technology. So servo wave technology is an enhancement built into the XT levers that will simply just multiply your pulling power. So unlike the MT201 levers, whenever you pull on the Dior XT levers, it goes up in a curved fashion. So the further you pull back, it amplifies from the point of whenever you started. This is a really cool and clever way so you can have shorter levers and be able to do that one finger braking. Now that we got the levers put on here, the only thing that you're gonna have to do after you put them on is do a simple lever bleed. You do not have to do a full bleed. Anytime I've installed these, just simply do a lever bleed and it will take a little bit longer because you're having to add a significant amount of fluid into the master cylinder and into the hose. 
But once you stop seeing bubbles come up into the cup, you know that you're done and you're ready to seal the system back up. So now that we've got everything installed, let's go ahead and hit up the trails and see how big of a difference these upgrades made. Now to me, new lightweight wheels give you this feeling of being able to fly up any hill effortlessly. And not only are these wheels super nice going uphill, but they have a really quick spin up. These things feel super snappy and responsive right off the line. And the momentum seems to go on forever. So far, I'm pretty impressed with these wheels. The big question is, is spending $500 to drop one pound really worth it? Well, that's gonna be completely up to you, but for me, this is definitely going to be a huge difference when it comes to race day. Now let's not forget about these XT levers. I absolutely love these. I've ridden with these several times on other bikes and switching over to these is well worth the money. There's several different versions that you can pick up, but I do prefer the Dior XT levers just because they have a little bit more adjustability. And as I've said before, the one finger braking is definitely a huge confidence booster. Being able to keep more of your hand on the grip and only one finger on the brake really does build a lot of confidence whenever you're going over some technical sections. Now that I've installed and I've ridden this bike with the new upgrades, I definitely think these are two solid upgrades for the Polygon and it puts me that much closer to making this a sub 25 pound bike. This bike is really becoming one of my favorite bikes to ride and I can't wait to do the next upgrades to it. If you guys like this video, hit the like button, leave me a comment below, what do you think of this Polygon and these upgrades that I've done? And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you wanna build up your own Polygon sync line, you can check out my links below to Bikes Online, and if you use those links, it does come back and help out this channel. But as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.